Uh, I am Indira Bhilde and I have been a resident of Daisar for over 54 years. I came as a child for holidays in Daisar and Daisar was a very beautiful green village once upon a time. We had man mangoes and uh, karwanda and uh, kaju orchids, orchids there and a very clean river and a beautiful landscape where all the children would play in the river. We learned to swim, we used to fish and I also remember the time when we used to go to immerse Ganesh over there at the Ganesh Ghat. Uh, so my memories of Daisar are very very beautiful and it's very painful to see what has happened to the Daisar river. You have been working on Daisar river. Yes. And when you started this project and what made you do this project? See, senior citizens uh, would meet every time and uh, they would say, oh, how sad, what has happened to our Daisar River? So every time I would tell them, let's make a joint effort to do something about it. But then some or the other, they were diffident. Kya hoega, kuch nahi hoega. Then I said, let me try at least. I owe something to my the river which I have played and been very happy with. So that's how I started uh, taking pictures of the Daisa River and hoping that I would meet some authority that would help me clean up the Daisa River. So when you started the project, who supported you? And what was the first step? Well, the only person who could see my dream was my husband because he understood how painful it was for me to see the Isar River in the condition uh, that it is today. And he too was an old resident of the Isar, so he also knew what the Isar River was. So it was kind of a very big support uh, from my husband. And what was the first step? First step was to taking photographs, learning how to take photographs. Then I started to take photographs and I started uh, documenting all the areas which have had, uh, you know, led to the uh, degradation of the river. That was the um, the big bridge, the Sudhir Fadke bridge, which started to choke the river with the pillars inside. I, I have pictures of the river before the Sudhir Fadke bridge. Then I have the pictures after the, uh, the, uh, the Sudhir Fadke bridge, uh, which was in the middle of the river. There are no bridges in the middle of the river. They are across the rivers. Bridges, the meaning of bridges is across the river. But for some reason, there was a big Jhopar Patti there, which they didn't want to destroy. So the authorities, the political parties, said it is better not to shift the Jhopar Patties, but we will put the, the bridge in the middle of the river. So that choked the entire basin of the river. What was the response of the government agency? And whom did you approach? I approached the BMC, but they said we can do nothing about it. This is pollution is from the buildings and pollution is from all over the areas. You all as citizens need to learn how not to throw garbage around. You all are the ones who are polluting the village, uh, the, gava, the sea, environment. So how much can we do? And in a way that is right. I mean, you can't expect them to come and clean up your bathrooms. It is we who do dirty, uh, I mean, uh, mess up the whole place and we want them to come and clean it up. First of all, why do we uh, mess up the whole thing? Garbage uh, bags are thrown into the river, uh, flowers are thrown into the river. I don't know when it becomes a river and when it becomes a nala. So it is the citizens who are to be blamed for polluting the river. And which government agency you had approached at the time after BMC? Any other government agency you had approached? Uh, I was invited by the Bombay Geographical Association for the 10th annual conference by the University of Bombay in 2002. It was on urban development and environment, contemporary issues in metropolitan cities.
uh, when I realized that I need to find solutions, offer solutions to authorities, that I started to uh, started the second phase of my project, and that is when I approached with my project to MMRDA, and that was in October 2002, and uh, I was. Uh, I presented the project to a committee of seven people who went through it and they felt it could be feasible if we had an uh, NGO, MCGM and MMRDA together and they could, the restoration of the river was possible. So any communication from MMRDA after that? No, there has been no communication after in 2003, uh, Dr. Matthew and myself, we presented a paper at the National Mangrove uh, Conference in Thane. And uh, we brought out the points about how the pollution in the river was affecting the mangroves of the Isar. And it was all documented, but nothing much was done after that. Okay, after 2003, did you approach anyone? Uh, no, I, I don't think so. After that, I when they, when they said that uh, we will look into it, nothing was done. Any development after that? Yeah, then Rachana Samsar approached me uh, in uh, 2004 uh, when they had gone to Mr. Pendarkar. So Mr. Pendarkar, I don't know his name, Pendarkar, uh, because they were interested in doing the Miti River project. So that's when Mr. Pendarkar said, there is already a project which is much simpler than Miti River and it is feasible, so why don't you go and approach Mrs. Indira Bhendik who has already done work on it. So, so that is how Rachna Sansad came to me, uh, if anything could be done, but nothing was done by them. All they did was they documented it. Okay. So, what are you expecting now? What do you think? How this project can be done? I am hoping that a lot of citizens' awareness has taken place. Uh, they also realize the pollution is getting to be a health, health hazard. And they are all waking up to the point where they can get together and they could move authorities to uh, help us change the, restore the river. Okay. Thank you very much, okay. Madam, for the interview. Thank you.